Laura Adams thought she was slowly losing her mind. Laura was seeing things that weren't there, and she was feeling things that didn't exist. Still, Laura had one clear thought. It all started when her mother got involved in what is known as the occult. When I was about 11 years old, I saw my mother start to, to take a departure from the, the, the person who I used to know. I started to see her going to psychics and tarot card readers and channelers. Laura Adams was surrounded by occult activities as a young girl. I knew that what she was doing was wrong. It was something that in my heart I knew was not appropriate to do. But there really wasn't much I could say on the matter. I was just a little girl, so I kind of watched it happen around me. Laura's mother encouraged her to explore the spiritual realm as she got older. And we were trained to believe that this education that we were receiving uh, meant that we were taking control of our lives and that we were getting something that, for example, Christians didn't get, that they were too ignorant to even explore. Her mother hosted lavish parties in their home and paid for readings for their guests. After a while, I started to accept it as norm. I would see a psychic or a tarot card reader or somebody who would do my chart in astrology. And I started taking classes on how to channel. I was reading books, uh, metaphysical books. But by her early teens, Laura didn't feel welcome at her own home. I saw my mother tell me that I was a guest in my own house. Um, and she also said that she had hated me and wished I had never been born. And these were things that my mother never expressed prior to her involvement in the cult. She always made me feel loved. Um, and so this was very, very traumatic for me. So she sought attention and acceptance elsewhere. A few years later, Laura started sleeping around. One night stands were her trademark. I received a lot of attention from men, and it made me feel special, uh, which made me encouraged to have more physical contact with him than I should have, obviously. Her reckless behavior led to two pregnancies. Both times, she chose abortion. Everybody had taught me that it was a clump of cells and that this wasn't worth anything, and I got an abortion and really didn't put a lot of emotional thought into it. I didn't want to think that this was a real baby. I didn't want to take responsibility for something like this. So it was just easy to do it and to pretend that it never happened. Laura finished college and went on to a successful career. But little by little, she felt like she was falling apart. I started hearing voices. I started having horrible nightmares. I would sometimes feel very dark energies upon me, like they were in the room. And these energies would tell me that they wanted to kill me. And it, the, the feeling was so realistic that I could not differentiate it from the truth. As her mental problems worsened, she saw a psychiatrist who told her she was mentally ill. He told me that I was bipolar. He told me I had manic depression. Um, I think that there was some psychosis in there also. Um, he told me that my situation would not get better, that it would actually get progressively worse, and at some point I would be institutionalized. Since doctors didn't offer much hope, she went to see a hypnotist for another opinion. The hypnotist was also a shaman. He laid hands on Laura's head in an effort to prove that her problems were in the spiritual realm. I felt something profoundly dark come off of me. Uh, is That's the best way I know how to explain it. I, I felt it come off my head and it was liberating. I felt a little bit of sanity come back. And I looked at him and I said, what was that? And he said to me, that was a demon. His use of the word demon in particular stuck out to her. That is when I received confirmation that Satan existed. This shocked me. It blew me right out of my chair. But after a few moments of thinking about it, I realized that if Satan existed, that means that Jesus Christ existed. And if that's the case, then what am I doing in this man's office? I need to go to the individual that was responsible for conquering Satan. And it was at that point that I left his office and chose to find a Christian path and get help. Laura called a Christian friend and he directed her to a Christian counselor. Her life started to turn around from the first appointment. We went into prayer together and it was at that point that I came before the Lord and I told him that I, I was receiving him as my Lord and Savior, and I asked him to forgive me of my sins. Although she accepted Christ as her Savior, Laura was haunted by her past. 
because of my abortions, because of my sleeping around, and because of my family's involvement in the occult. Um, this was not something that was going to come off me overnight. It's taken a lot of prayer and repentance, but Laura is now free from her bondage. I have been completely delivered. I am experiencing mental clarity and emotional joy at a level I've never experienced before in my life. The Lord has completely blessed me. That dark hole that was in me for the 38 years that I was on this planet before coming to know the Lord left me. And uh, the abyss went away and I was filled with a joy that I have, I have never seen to this day. You know, the devil has done everything he can to make people believe he doesn't exist. And yet people live for him. And a lot of people think God exists, and yet they don't live for him. It's one of those great lies and deceptions. But ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know, Satan is real. Demonic power is real. Demon possession is real. This isn't something for the Dark Ages. It isn't something for India. It's not something for uh, the Caribbean. It's for right here in the U.S. of A. People are demonic. People are demon-possessed. Now, you don't need to go around trying to chase out demons out of everybody you see, but the truth is people who get involved in the occult, who uh, go into reading of tarot cards, uh, into uh, various types of seances and things like that, they're opening themselves to demonic influence. And some of you have had that problem. Now, you may not be possessed, but you may be obsessed or oppressed by demonic power. Why? Why do you have that? Because you're opening yourself to dark powers. And many people particularly want to know what the future is. They want success. They want business success. And they say, well, I'll trade it. I'll, 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 I'll accept what the devil has if I can have money or I can have uh, ability with the opposite sex or I can have some attractiveness or I can have a high office or I can have power. But I'll tell you right now, Jesus Christ is the only one who will give you peace. He says, my peace I give unto you, not like the world gives. I want to give you peace. You can have peace of soul. Laura had that. She had torment for many years. And then suddenly, that demonic power, that dark power left her, and she was set free. Do you want to be free today? Would you like to be free of the power of the devil? This is real. I'm not, I'm not playing games. This isn't some church game. This is real. And if you want to be free of that thing that is bothering you and tormenting you and keeping you awake and, and giving you no peace, right now, I want you to pray with me these words. Bow your head and pray. Do it now. Jesus, that's right. Say it. Jesus, I know that you died for the sins of the world and for my sin. And I know that when you died on the cross, you defeated Satan. And you rose again, and you live forevermore. And so, Lord Jesus, right now, I turn away from Satan. I turn away from demonic things. I turn away from the occult, and I turn to you. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Live your life in me. Fill me with your spirit. And I reject at this moment the underhanded work of Satan I speak words, Satan, loose me from this moment on, for I belong to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you've heard my prayer, and thank you that you've come into my heart. For those who prayed with me, let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, let the anointing power of the Holy Spirit come upon them. May they know deliverance at this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed with me, let's make a big thing of it. Let's rejoice that you are free. And I want you right now to go to your phones and call in. I have here available a little packet. It's called A New Day. There's a 73-minute CD, compact disc. 
It tells about being born again, tells about being starting a new life. What happens if you sin? What happens if you, um, when the Lord comes back? What about the baptism of the Spirit? It's all here. And I'll give this to you free if you just call. But if you're set free, if you want further counseling, further advice, further prayer, people are here for you. So go to your phones right now and call 1 800 759 0700. Absolutely free, toll free number. And say, I prayed with Pat. I am free of the occult. Terry? Well, still, I have.